epic. Today, read aloud, is, drum roll, <laughs> Sunny's Bridge. Jazz legend Sonny Rollins finds his groove. It is written by Barry Wittenstein and the illustrator is Keith Mallet. Now, there are a number of reasons why I really, really love this book. First off, the illustrations are absolutely gorgeous. So make sure you take uh, some time and effort to appreciate that as we're reading through the book. But the other thing I want you guys to think about as I'm reading is the unique style of writing that the author chooses while writing, chose while writing this book. How is this writing similar or different from other books that we've read together? What can you notice about some of the words that the author chose? And you know what? Not just the words that he chose, but also how he chose to write them. And then you can go on and think about how I chose to pronounce those words that were written a little differently. Do you think that I did it right? Do you think that I did it justice? Or do you think that they should be pronounced a different way? There's a lot to think about. I want you to kind of think it over while I'm reading and talk about it with whoever you're listening uh, to this with. Or send me a message. Let me know what you think. Um, but I love this book. I really want to discuss it with you. And I can't wait to read it. So let's not wait any longer. Let's go. Sunny's Bridge. Jazz legend Sonny Rollins finds his groove. Misty night, summer night, East River, New York City night. You hear that? Hear what? That. That. Somebody's playing the saxophone. So what? So, that's Sonny Rollins. That's what? Wait, what? That's Sonny Rollins? The Sonny Rollins? What the heck is Sonny Rollins doing on the Williamsburg Bridge this time of night? Nobody knows, man. Nobody knows. Except Sonny and he ain't saying. First set. Born right place, right time, 137th Street, New York City, Harlem Renaissance, 1930. Sweet sounds of swing jazz swirl in the air. Sir Duke's satin melodies. That's Duke Ellington for you younger cats. Lady Ella's singing scat. That's Ella Fitzgerald if you don't know that. Count Bassey and Glenn Miller in the mood with their jukebox and radio tunes, but nothing beats stomping at the Savoy Lie. The Foxtrot, Lindy Hop, Mambo and Jive. Big band swing will never die. Starting to notice something? Starting to hear a little something? Sonny shuffles his way to grade school, passes an eight by 10 glossy in the jazz club window. Louis Jordan looking dapper in a tux and tail. His golden king zephyr sax ready to wail. That's me, Sunny dreams. That's me. A few years go by. Sunny gets his very own horn. First time he holds her in his arms. Falls in love, won't let her go. Doesn't even hear his mama calling him for dinner. He's blowing crazy in his bedroom closet with the door closed. Nothing else matters. Nothing. World War II, soldiers overseas defending democracy, return home still fighting for freedom, their own. A harder, faster sound scratching at the front door. Together, a new generation of cats, Charlie Bird Parker and John Dizzy Gillespie invite, inventing a musical language nobody ever heard before. Painting rhythms with colors nobody ever seen before taking risks jazz musicians never took before. This is the soundtrack in Sunny's ears, on the corners, stoops, and streets of Sugar Hill, 
Its name is Biba. Sunny sneaks into the Apollo Theater on 125th. The Cotton Club, the Minton's Playhouse, watching, listening, learning, nurtured under the wings of the Jazz King. Turns 19 and 49, geeking around town around midnight, people starting to notice. Who's that kid on the horn? He's nice. He's new. He's hot. He's cool. Soon, Sonny's becoming a bebopping jazz king, too. Turn the page to Rosa Parks. Arrested, 1950s. Sonny plays fancy joints and two-bit joints. Two shows a night, two sets per show. Changing, phrasing, involving, X experimenting, slowly building up momentum. Then, boom bop beep bop, hold on tight, cause Sunny explodes, improvising at the speed of light, notes going places. He doesn't even know where he's going. I'm sorry, he doesn't even know where they're going. Rockets to the top of the jazz universe. His albums, Saxophone Colossus and Freedom Suite, hailed as milestones, now heading at 57th and 7th. That's Carnegie Hall for you out-of-town cats, awarded the Jazz King's crown. But it's too heavy, Honey says. I'm not ready. Ain't that just like Sunny? Can't stop looking for that one lost chord. Question, how much greater can how much greater can a great become? Sunny's answer, I'll tell you when I get there. Hard bop, surprise, stop, 29 and 59 in this prime, Sunny shatters the jazz world, rowing up his hands, lays down his horn, looks in the mirror doesn't like what he sees. Name bigger than talent. That's some hard truth to swallow. Jazz scene like a train speeding in the wrong direction. But he knows if he don't jump, he won't last. Rumors circulating. Maybe Sonny's never coming back. Intermission. Living with his wife, Lucille, Lower East Side, small apartment, paper thin walls, no telephone ring a ding ding, no gigs, no deadlines, no pressure. 16 hours every day plays to his heart's delight. Suits Sonny just fine till a neighbor complains. Hey, Sonny, I'm having a baby. Ain't nowhere else you can blow that thing. Please. Sorry, 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 Sonny says. Now Sonny's got to find a place no one goes, where he can make notes cry and squeak, beg and speed, bend them up, bend them sideways. Where the heck in the Big Apple he's going to find a place like that? Second set. Looks up. That's it, Sonny says. That's it. Hiding in plain sight. The bridge named Williamsburg, collecting, connecting Manhattan to Brooklyn, where he's going to connect the old to the new, from what was to what will be. Isn't that what bridges do? Sunrise day, sunset night, neither rain nor snow nor heat nor cold keeps Sunny away from his secret rendezvous with Henrietta, his beloved saxophone. Seeking refuge and solitude, finding inspiration, finding himself in the echoes of the echoes of the echoes. Trains clanking, headlights flashing, East River tugboats honking, Sunny honks right back. Take that, Jack. <laughs> Up here it hits you in the face. So much sound, so much silence, so much faith. This was heaven. 
this was heaven. One year transposes into two. Hard be bopping, news dropping, excitement brewing like a steamy cup of joe at noon. Sunny steps down from the bridge. Cause you can't be in heaven and on earth at the same time. Rumors begin percolating. Some say Sunny's found a new sound. Some say he's not even playing the sax anymore. Some say Sonny is scared of the younger cats on the prowl. Others saying Sonny is going to out Sonny Sonny. New Sonny tunes it all out. Glides back into the recording studio. Dark shades on to keep the inside from getting out and the outside from getting in. Nods to the drummer. He starts the groove. Stand up bass follows. Makes it move. Electric guitar waiting for a sign. Sonny snapping his fingers, lays down the melody in a nice straight line. Sonic bebop boom boom bop. Sonny breaks the barrier, enters a new dimension, his subconscious. Because he can't think and play at the same time. Two weeks. Winter, 1962, three recording sessions and six tracks later. That's it, Sunny Bean. That's it. Shiny vinyl, pressed hot wax. The album titled, drum roll please, The Bridge. Now you know all you gotta know about the most humble, honest, and spiritual cat the one, the only, the legendary, Mr. Walter Theodore Sonny Rollins.